You dream of camels, and also of wind and bells and dust and colorful headcloths. The young woman with brilliant red hair is here. She walks beside you, her white robe gliding along the dirt road as if there were a pocket of air between her and the ground. Neither she nor the robe gathers any dirt as she moves along the dusty streets, in and among the camel drivers, speaking in tongues, exchanging coins, occasionally turning her face towards you. She leads a single camel without a rope. Its reins rest loose on its shoulders. The camel's back is covered with a thick wool blanket, faded in color and frayed at the edges. And there are two leather saddlebags filled with unknown provisions. You follow her. She leads with grace. She appears neither coy nor aloof, simply knowing, aware. A few strands of her hair are tied with leather strips on either side of her head. And in her left hand is a pouch made of bright blue fabric. She makes her way to a stall on the outskirts of the town. You join her at a small table where she is already pouring tea for you. She sets down the pot and then looks up at you. You don't know where you are, only that she is why you are here. You want to know about the camel, she says. She speaks in a matter of fact way, but without a trace of arrogance. Somehow, she gives you the feeling of being understood without even having to speak. After she sips her tea, but before you can answer, or rather because speaking seems unnecessary, she begins to explain. The camel is the favorite of the high priestess, who is a bridge between the darkness and the light. As a keeper of sacred wisdom, as the goddess of the moon, as a bearer of the crown of Isis, the high priestess requires a vehicle to transport her gifts of abundance from the dream world. Camels are perfect companions for any pilgrimage. They are skilled guides and suited for long and difficult journeys. Also, something happens on the back of a camel. We begin to see things from a different perspective and a new world opens up for us, one we didn't know existed. She takes another sip of tea and then rises from her chair and gathers the camel's reins, slowly lifting them over the gentle beast's head. When finally you find the courage to speak, you ask feebly where she is headed with her camel. She turns back to you, a look of surprise on her face. The camel is for you, she says, and hands you the reins.